Hey, Matt. Hey, Dave. You are going to wait to start recording till we start? Yeah, it started. Um, Dave, if you could hit the record button. Right. I don't know what the rules are for your Alabama Zoom, but my Maryland Zoom says I have to let everybody know they're being recorded so they can, <clears throat> excuse me, if they can leave if they want. So there's your warning so that I don't get fired. Uh, I'd like to call our the... 2021 U.S. Aquaculture Society business meeting to order. It is uh, 102 Eastern. I will share my agenda here. We've got to go by so everyone gets really small. So, all right, so there's our agenda. Um, welcome, everyone. I uh, wish we were in San Antonio right now to be able to do this all in person and have a beer and all that kind of fun stuff. But the way of the world right now is we uh, were unable to do that. And since we were able to go ahead with our elections, we went ahead and planned our business meeting to, in a, a virtual way, which I think will work out good. We get to see some people we haven't seen in a long time um, and they don't always make the meetings. So with that, our first order of business is the approval of the 2020 business meeting minutes. Those were provided to the uh, everyone in the email that went out letting them know about the meeting with the registration link. Is there a motion from anyone to maybe uh, waive the reading of the minutes? So moved. Right, it sounded like Mike Master. Is there a second? Back in John Van Tatten. All right. Kwamina, you can pick from about four people that raise their hand for that. Um, so we'll do with that. So with, is there a motion to accept the minutes? Gary Fornshell motioned to accept the minutes. Is there a second? I see Angela Caparelli's hand for a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, if there's anyone opposed, please make it known. All right, the approval of the minutes passes. So the next uh, uh, thing up is John Cooksey, so you can give us the executive office report. John, you're muted. I suppose the main thing to talk about for uh, the executive office report is the meetings for WAS and the U.S. chapter. And um, as Matt alluded to, if it wasn't for the corona, we'd be in San Antonio right now having this meeting. But unfortunately, that's not the case right now. And all of the meetings that we have last year have been either rescheduled or canceled. And San Antonio being at this time of the year wouldn't have worked as we can see now. So we last year had changed it to August 11th through the 14th of this year. And unless something major happens between now and then, we're gonna go ahead with a in-person regular meeting. We don't know if there'll be any uh, restrictions as far as space and masks and all that sort of thing, but um, all the projections say that a good portion of the US will be vaccinated uh, by the end of July in time for our meeting. So we've got to go ahead with it because we can't keep moving everything back and back and back. And and also we need some money in the in WAS. So because we've gone over a year without hardly any income coming in. And thanks to the US chapter and all and the other chapters as well, uh, we've been able to keep things rolling and um, moving forward. Rather than just disappear over the last year, we've tried to be active. We tried to keep the uh, website being reinvigorated, being uh, all the format and the pictures changing and that so that we wanted to make sure people knew we were still alive and still active and still viable as a society. So we've been doing some webinars. The U.S. chapter has done a fantastic job of, of doing some different webinars to let people know you're there and active. Um, We've been doing a lot of press releases with our media partners, doing everything we could to try to make it appear as though the society was just as active as before, other than the meetings being canceled. 
Um, so the San Antonio meeting is scheduled for August 11 through 14. Uh, we have now moved the Singapore meeting, which was originally in June 2020, then December 2020, uh, June 2021, and now it's in December of 2021. Um, so the first live meeting that we'll have is the San Antonio meeting. And I think that's a good um, thing for that meeting because probably 60% of the emails I get say, Will you have a live meeting, please? We're so tired of seeing our friends in two by two inch squares. We want to sit down and have a beer and talk things over and visit and, and be there in person. So, so like I said, unless anything major comes up, we're moving ahead on the uh, um, San Antonio meeting in August. Um, the Aquaculture 2022 meeting, which is the triennial in the USAS meeting, as well is going to go ahead as planned. Those dates are uh, February 27th through March 3rd of 2022. That's the reason we can't keep moving San Antonio back anymore because we run into that meeting. And the Triennial is a major meeting for all of us, so we need to have that going ahead as scheduled. I think that's all in the meetings. If anybody has a particular question to that, I know it's hard in this format, but um, if anybody has a particular question that I haven't covered, let me know. If you have a question, please use the reactions down at the bottom to raise your hand, and then we can call on you so that uh, we don't have a lot of folks talking over each other. Dave, a question, question that Dave usually asks me is that uh, uh, Dave Strauss is if I've uh, set up any new meetings. I haven't. I haven't uh, traveled. I haven't done uh, anything about setting up any future meetings. So once uh, we're good to go and start traveling again, we'll be uh, working hard to set up. Uh, we're booked through 2023 in New Orleans. So we'll be working hard as soon as we get the clearance to travel and that to uh, set up 24 or 25 down the road. Thanks for addressing my question, John. You're welcome. <laughs> you always ask me that, so I didn't want to leave it unanswered. Um, I guess one other thing I should report on is uh, um, that as of March 31st, Carol Mendoza is retiring and hitting the open road in her trailer. And so uh, we've been working uh, quite hard over the last six months to set up a replacement for her. There's no way to replace Carol, but we are uh, in need of setting up help in the home office to take care of all the things that need to be done there. So as we go forward, uh, Judy Andrasco will become the home office director. And uh, Killian Hyland will become the assistant home office uh, director. And we, one of the main functions Carol had that was really hard to have someone else do was the bookkeeping and taking care of all the record keeping and the finances for the society. And so we've hired an independent bookkeeper um, actually here in San Diego to just handle the bookkeeping chores. They'll have no access to the funds. They won't be a signatory or have any ability to transfer funds or anything like that. Uh, Judy will have that responsibility and I, I also will be a signer on the account. But um, uh, this lady comes highly recommended. Uh, my accountant I've had for 40 years uh, has known her her whole life and has worked with her. And so it was a very strong recommendation. And, Carol and Judy have been quite happy working with her and it looks like it'll work out very well. So unfortunately, Carol's gonna be leaving, but we are covered for the day-to-day -day of society and it'll be strange to go to meetings and that and not see Carol there. So um, that's the upshot of that. All right, that's the only things I had to talk about. Any other questions for John? Dave Come on. You said you said the San in, or the Singapore meeting was going to be in person, correct? Yes. Okay, but that's just a, a Asian Pacific chapter, or was that? Well, it was the World Aquaculture Annual Meeting, uh, and we're still calling it World Aquaculture 2020, um, but we've reduced it from four days to three days, and uh, we've canceled the Indonesia meeting, which was going to be the APC meeting for uh, 2021. But Indonesia is a total mess with the COVID and they won't be 
recovered will tell well in the next year because it's just they don't have the infrastructure to deal with it or try to get vaccinations out very easily in that. So we canceled the Indonesia meeting. We moved the Singapore meeting to December, changed it to three days, and we think by then we should be good to go. And it'll primarily be an Asia Pacific type of meeting, I think. Um, although it turns out since we canceled the Indonesia meeting, it was a good move because all the exhibitors who had canceled in Singapore are coming back into Singapore. So that's good. And uh, Singapore has actually done very well during the pandemic. So we expect to have a, a fully uh, live action meeting in December. They should be fully recovered there. All right, anything else? All right, up next on our agenda is the home office report from Carol and Judy, if they have anything to report. I don't have a report. I'll just tell her bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm, this is my last, the last, last meeting to uh, attend. I've had stuff last week and this week, so this is the end. So I uh, just tell her bye bye. And Judy's got some membership numbers, I think. Well, we'll definitely miss you, that's for sure. I'll miss seeing everybody at meetings. It was like family reunion every time. Enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Best to you, Carol. Thanks. Okay, I guess it's my turn. And I will also miss Carol. However, she's not very far away since we don't live far apart. So, and it's good to see everyone, although in this form rather than in person, but still good to see so many familiar faces that I have not seen in a while. Um, for the membership report, I'll just give a number. It's uh, the total number of USAS members as of today are 463. And we are down considerably from what we normally would be due to COVID and mostly due to the fact that we have not had any meetings because as most of you know, our membership numbers always go up around meeting times. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer if I can. Does anyone have any questions for Judy? All right, I don't, I don't see any hands or hear anything. So uh, next on our agenda is our treasurer's report. And Kwamina, I've got your uh, treasurer's report ready that I can just pull up and share if that will work for you and everyone can see it and uh, go sure. through it. Yeah, that was good. So whenever you're ready, just let me know when to scroll. Okay, so um, two main highlights uh, for the year ending it's not a fiscal year, but we are talking about calendar year ending 2020. Our fiscal year runs April to March of the following year, but we don't have the one for January and February this year yet. So this report is from April to December of last year. Uh, so two things, major things you need to be aware of. COVID, we all know, so it affected our revenues. Uh, from registration, we had about 4,800, and we are expecting about 15,000 uh, to be added uh, to this from the 2020 conference in Hawaii. So our total revenue from the conference is going to be around 20,000. And then because of the challenges that you know everybody is facing, the home office, I think, uh, requested that the chapters kind of loan them some money to keep the wheels running. And so the board voted to, um, to loan a total of the 80 or 85,000 uh, to the home office if needed. So in August, uh, they requested uh, 25,000, which we gave them. And then in October, they requested additional 40,000. So. Uh, as of December, we have loaned the home office 65,000 to keep the wheels rolling. You can see the table there. I wouldn't go through um, 
you know, conference revenue has been our main thing, but because of COVID, we are down. Uh, but, you know, we made a little bit of money from there since we didn't spend that much. Uh, scroll down to the next page. So this sort of give us our financial situation uh, in uh, both savings and checking accounts. Uh, we have about 57,000 right now. And then for our long-term investments, mutual funds and all those different portfolios that we have, we have about 337,000. And so, um, and if you, you know, balance out with all our assets and liabilities, we are really doing okay. Uh, so our bottom line is what is down there, uh, despite some few losses uh, from the uh, from the stock market, as we all know. But overall, I think we have a healthy financial picture. And thanks to everyone, how you know we've been able to manage uh, through uh, 2020 with the COVID situation. So that is the report. Does anyone have any questions for Kwamina? Okay, so we'll keep on moving on. Up next is our election report from uh, Angela Caparelli, the chair of the election committee. Thank you, Matt. Um, we had, uh, I guess Judy would have to tell me how many votes came in, but it was pretty good. And it was tight races on all of them, but um, president-elect was Bill Walton. Secretary Treasurer elected was Eric Saliates. Um, board members is Steve Hughes and Carla Schilberger. Um, and all of the changes in the bylaws were approved. So if you guys have any other questions on that. Um, I do wanna say that since that, I, I firmly believe through questions and people confirming that they would run for board positions, one of the benefits that, that opened it up because we did have a lot of nominations that the election committee, which I wanna give full thanks for, what had to pick and choose and rate who was actually made it on the ballot. And I think one of the positives in getting more people than could actually be on the ballot was the decision by the board last year to help fund them get to the meetings. So um, people weren't as hesitant to um, be put on the ballot or actually go into the race um, knowing that they would have to find their own funding to get to those meetings. So I think that was a positive. Um, but those were the elections results. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them if I can. If not, I'll just make something up. All right, any questions for Angela? Do we have a motion to destroy the ballots? So moved. Mike Schwartz in a, in a second. I'll second Dave, that. Dave Connor, Dennis McIntosh, take your pick. All in favor of destroying the election ballots, say aye or wave furiously. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed, wave not so furiously. All right, see so none, the motion carries, our ballots can be destroyed. I don't know who actually does that. I guess that would be Judy um, hitting the delete key. Um, but yeah, I don't know if we have to change that um, because it is getting so much more electronic. Um, well, I got a good it. overview of voting in the WASP board meeting last week and they, they I think they still have quite a bit of paper that they end up tallying by hand, so. <clears throat> Even though everything comes in electronic, they still need to count them up by hand. So I think we'll be fine. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is update on committee activities. And I'll just kind of give a brief overview of the last year. As uh, John mentioned, we did really well with webinars this year. I think uh, there were eight of them, I believe. And Dave Klein has some information that we could send around on how many people uh, attended, how many people registered, where they were from. He, you could tell he had to do some extension reporting because he asked a lot of questions and got a lot of good information afterwards. 
and I'm going to put him on the spot. He suggested maybe he could write up the results from all those surveys for World Aquaculture Magazine so that everyone could see how things went with our webinars. And I think that that would be an awesome thing for Dave Klein to do with all of his stuff. And he can get his, his other folks in the webinar committee to, to help out as well. Uh, we heard from Kwame about financials. We heard from Angela about the uh, elections. Dennis McIntosh has been working on the professional awards and they've extended the deadline, I believe. Dennis, what's the new deadline for your professional awards? Apparently June. June. That'll, and that'll be the end. We won't and extend it further. They've had one nomination for each category. So there's still time that if you know a deserving person to nominate them. Um, Aaron Watson has been working as hard as he can on the student awards and he has, they've extended that deadline, I believe, to whenever the abstracts are due for student awards. So they're, <clears throat> they're, they're doing that and trying to, to make that work. As far as uh, student activities, as you can imagine, there haven't been a lot of student activities this year since no one could really been able to go out and do anything. However, we did add a few uh, subunits. We added a couple last year at the board meeting. And then yesterday we added a new or approved a new student subunit for Lake Superior State University up there in the great white north somewhere um, to be a new student subunit. So they'll they'll get their startup funds and be able to, to get going here pretty soon if Lauren hasn't let them know what happened already. So. And then we held another meeting. We had planned to hold it in Washington, D.C. back in October. However, we were not able to hold an in-person meeting. So we held a virtual meeting aimed at federal decision makers and Congress persons and congressional staff with aquaculture interests and responsibilities. That meeting uh, went very well. We had everything recorded. We had an outside company do the recording and stuff this time and they're all, po all the presentations are posted on our YouTube channel. The company also wrote up a summary document about kind of summarized all the presentations so you don't have to sit through four or five hours of, of talks to kind of know what they were about. And that will be available on our website soon. It uh, worked out so it worked out well because it was a lot cheaper because we weren't paying $15 for a ham and cheese sandwich in Washington, D.C. To, to feed everyone. We're paying for room rentals and, and all that kind of thing. Speaking of our website, Matt Smith has worked really hard this year and got us a new website up and running and launched uh, a, lot, a month or so ago. I encourage you all to take it out or to check it out. They've also been working really hard on social media posts. We've had a social media intern from the University of Idaho. She's done a great job of getting uh, things posted for us. We've also been paying a company to post social media for us on occasion because it's, you know, I'm not a social media person. Well, I can do it, but it doesn't look professional. Um, so, they, so that it looks good. And that was supposed to be a trial run of paying to see how it went through Aquaculture America, but then that got postponed. So the board yesterday decided that we would keep paying them and see how they go through the San Antonio meeting and then make a decision on whether or not we want to, to keep going with that afterwards. It's about $300 a month. They do four or five posts a month and it's Matt Smith said that it makes their job a whole lot easier just to send it to that person and say, hey, here's something you could post. And then they make it pretty and they post it and send it along. Uh, I think that's about all of them. If there's any committee members that I missed something, feel f oh, we started a, a an ad hoc diversity, equity, and inclusion committee this year after our interesting year in the United States and everyone is realizing we need to do better. So we decided we would start this committee and, and kind of see what the feeling of people in our association, our society were. They sent out a survey just last week when I mentioned it to the World Aquaculture Board. They were all really interested in knowing what the results were and wanted us to be sure we shared those results with the other chapters around the world. 
uh, Eric and that Eric Salient is chairing that committee, and they are also working on coordinating a session at Aquaculture America in San Antonio to present some of the information from that and to present other DEI efforts in aquaculture uh, around the country, I believe. There, I think that that now I think that one is, is really all the all pretty much all the committees, unless I missed anything big. Anyone wants to chime in or if anyone has any questions, we can be glad to uh, address them. Yes, Bill Walton. Uh, just curious, like um, you mentioned the presentations that were giving, given at the um, event in DC. What, what do you think some of the outcomes were from that? I think that we, we got some people that said that they enjoyed hearing more about it. One thing that happened is the contact in Norway was really interested in talking with David Klein and they might work some, coordinate some education efforts between schools in the US and schools in Norway about some aquaculture opportunities. Oh, Matt, I was asking about the, the DC, the educational event with, um, I'm not sure what it was called, the one in Washington, DC. Yes, online. Okay. Um, we, had, we had a presenter from Norway okay. that, came that talked about and the, the topics generally were what's going on in the US with aquaculture, the impacts of COVID, what's going on with other countries and how other countries have implemented um, aquaculture development plans and kind of what the takeaways that they've learned from that. We had a couple of guys from Norway talk and we had a guy from Canada talk and he gave us some ideas of what worked well and what didn't work well. And from what I heard, and the people from NOAA also gave us a update on their national aquaculture development plan. And they've said that they enjoyed hearing or like, were, were glad to hear what was going on in other countries to help them guide some things that might hear like lessons learned from other places. Um, so I think, I think it went well. And uh, I'd have to go back and look, but we did, they did a follow-up survey and some of those results from the attendees are in the, the report that they put together for us. I'd have to go back and, and review that to see exactly what they said. But given the cost doing a virtual one, it it was much less cheap, much less expensive to do a virtual one than it was to uh, do the in person. And I and I'll add that we had help from the Nature Conservancy in planning. We had help from the AFS Fish Culture section. We had help from the National Aquaculture Association, along with Carol Engel. And there was probably a couple others that I'm just not remembering off the top of my head that helped organize that as well. Yes, Ganesh. Just wondering about, is there any opportunities for upcoming graduate students to present their research uh, within this USA, USA's form, just like what David Klein was doing for, you know, researchers? And I know in San Antonio meeting is coming in, but, you know, people have lost so many opportunities over the 18 months. Lauren Jeskovich, would you like to handle that question? Yes, so the Student Activities Committee uh, reached out um, and just for um, confirmation from uh, USAS members to see if we would like to organize a student session that was virtual for practice for USAS. That would count as a professional presentation. However, I only received uh, one student that was interested, so we decided not to move ahead. Um, with that direction to wait. So, and given the student subunit reports that we did receive from the five subunits we currently have, um, it, it seems that most students typically are overwhelmed at the moment due to COVID and being virtual. Any other questions? I, we talked about it. we thought it was a good idea, Ganesh, but then when those no students were interested in doing it, then it wasn't, we didn't follow up on it after that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any other questions about committees or activities in the last uh, 12 months or so? All right, so our, our next item is our change of officers into the, the new year for a new business. 
but before we do that, I just wanted to say I've really enjoyed being the uh, USAS president this past year. I had no idea that everything would get shut down and make things a bit interesting for our society and parent society um, when I when I signed on to do this. So uh, it was as uh, Rebecca Lockman told me the other day, she said, I'm sure it was an atypical year for a USAS presidency. So I, I would uh, agree to that. So uh, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the help that I got from our board members and our committees. And I'm sure that as we move forward, the society is going to still be in really good hands. But I have a couple of things to show before we, uh, before we transition our, our new folks. So normally we would do this in person with a nice framed something. So Carol mailed these all out to the, the people. So hopefully if you haven't received it, you will be getting it soon. It's in the mail. You know, the, the post office is running slow in some areas these days, so it might take a little longer. So first we have a certificate of appreciation for Angela Caporelli for outstanding service to the society. As she served first as vice president starting in 2016, then moved to president elect and then moved to president and then moved to finishing up now as immediate past president. So that was a, a nice five, six year run going there. Thank you very much, Angela, for your service to the society. Thank you, Matt. Um, it's been a really good learning experience and um, just really helpful overhaul. I think we got some really good stuff done and I think that Matt has done an outstanding job and we can all just move forward past COVID and really get aquaculture into the limelight in the US and I'm really excited to be part of it and I'll still be around. So good luck, Dennis, and um, I'm here. All right, thank you, Angela. Next, we have a certificate of appreciation for Kwamina for outstanding service as secretary treasurer uh, the last two years. Having done secretary treasurer, I understand how much extra fun that can be at times, especially like when you hear your recording didn't record um, and you have to come up with the minutes. Uh, so thank you very much, Kwamina. Um, if you'd like to say anything, you're more than you're welcome to and you're if you haven't received it, it's in the mail. No, I did receive it. And I want to thank everyone. Uh, all the support I got from the board and the membership. Especially I want to uh, thank uh, Carol for all the, the bookkeeping and all that she's, she's been doing. She made my work very easy. So thank you very much for, for helping me do what I was supposed to be doing. Okay, thank you, Kwamina. And next we have a certificate of appreciation for Lauren Jeskovich as a member at large director for the last two years. And uh, I think Lauren might have done more work than a lot of everyone else because she was the student subunit and the student activities uh, committee chair. So she did a, a lot of work and there's no way that I would have been able to do any of that stuff and get it done with, with near the, the, the quality that she did it. So Thar Laura, Lauren, thank you very much. Like I've said, I am going to be talking to you soon about bringing you back in some form or fashion. So if there's anything you'd like to, to say, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, thanks. And I just want to say thank you to everybody to help. And I'm, I'm happy to kind of get students more involved and integrated in a multi-generational industry and, and education moving forward. And I'm happy to help continuing. So thank you. All right, thank you, Lauren. And then last but not least, I'd like to thank uh, Matt DiMaggio for his assistance on the board. He was the uh, outreach chair. I think that's the one he was on. And he was, he was really had played a big part in helping getting webinars going and working on our in-person workshops that we have before the meetings. Uh, so Matt, thank you very much for your service. Like I said, if you haven't received it, it is in the mail. And if you'd like to say anything, you're more than welcome to. I uh, did receive it. Thanks, Matt. Um, just wanted to thank everybody for the opportunity to serve on the board. Um, and wish all the new people the best uh, moving forward. Um, looking forward to see what the society can do post-pandemic. 
So thanks for the opportunity. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, so with that, I will introduce you to your new president, Mr. or excuse me, Dr. Dennis McIntosh, and he can introduce you to his new uh, board members. Um, and thank you very much, Dennis, it is all yours. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to um, be the president of the U.S. Aquaculture Society. Um, it's quite an honor. I was kind of reflecting a little, realized I've been involved in the society for the last 20 plus years. Seems hard to imagine. I like to think of myself as one of the young guys, but I think that's no longer the case. It's getting harder and harder for me to justify that to myself and to others too. You can see the gray in the beard. Um, really just want to take a minute. Um, I just have a few things to say. I really do want to thank Matt for the leadership over the last year. I know it's been a really tough year and a really um, difficult opportunity to kind of, or difficult situation that we've all been put in. Um, I think Matt has done a tremendous job um, kind of keeping us steady and keeping us moving forward. Um, honestly, very impressed with the progress that we've made as a society, despite the pandemic. It's just a great opportunity to um, see these things continue and the, you know, the energy that everybody's putting in. Um, again, despite everything else that's going on in the world and our personal lives. So Matt, um, thank you again for your leadership over the last year. Um, and it's certainly I will be calling on you for um, advice and you know, help moving forward. Also just want to um, you know, thank the board members that are cycling off. Really appreciate the time that I've spent on the board with you as the president elect. Um, you know, it's been helpful to kind of get to know some, some new folks, some new faces to kind of deepen some connections with people that, I've, that I already knew. Um, you will certainly be missed and thank you for your service. And certainly um, appreciate the new people coming in. Our new secretary treasurer, or um, let me start with our president elect, excuse me, that's gonna be Bill Walton. Bill, welcome, um, thank you. Be a pleasure to work with you as we move forward. Um, Eric Salient will be the secretary treasurer replacing Kwamina. Um, certainly that will be a, a great resource as well. And then Steve Hughes and Carla Schubinger will be on the uh, board as uh, members at large. Um, so that will be the new faces on the board helping um, move us forward. Looking forward to an exciting year. We've got two, you know, meetings in the U.S. this year. You know, the, obviously the San Antonio meeting in August and then, um, you know, followed quickly by the Aquaculture 2022 in San Diego, um, you know, in February. So it'll be a busy year for all of us, I'm sure. An exciting year as well. So looking forward to being at the helm. Um, please reach out. Feel free to um, touch base if there are questions or suggestions as we move forward. Um, I'd be really appreciate the input and um, comments. So that's really all I have to say. Thank you very much. Looking forward to uh, working with everybody. I'll just say that Carol Mendoza sent me a uh, message that I'm supposed to hold up the uh, the plaque um, since you're not able to actually physically give it to me. Oh, and the gavel is in my office, which I haven't been to in about a year. So once I get back to my office and I uh, clear the dust off of it, I will um, find, we, we can meet up over on the Eastern shore somewhere and do a, a gavel transfer and take a picture or something Absolutely. like that. So. I'll buy you a beer too. I'll twist my arm. <laughs> So you get to also uh, ask for the motion to adjourn the meeting. Excellent. So before we adjourn, any other um, business or any other questions or comments that we need to address as a, as a business meeting before we go? Not seeing anyone, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Dave, did you have a question or are you motioning to adjourn? I just want, I, I know everybody said it here, but it's great to see some old faces that uh, I hadn't seen in a long time. Gary Jensen's even here. Wow. But uh, it's great to see everybody. Um, and uh, thank you all, the people that did serve. Thank you for serving on the board. Uh, we really appreciate your contributions to the society and good luck you people coming in. Thank you. So, right, Daniels, are you motioning to adjourn? Making a motion? I'll, I'll motion. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? 
All right. All right. Well, our mission, our meeting is officially over. This I is normally where we'd hand out drink tickets, but you know, <laughs> you're on your own. It's BYOB today. So BYOB. But I would imagine we can keep.